Hey, it's the Profit Answer Man, Rocky Lalvani. If you're new to the podcast, check out my interview with Mike Michalowicz. It's episode number two. If you want to hear about each chapter in the Profit First book, go back and listen to episodes three through 13. Episode one is the why and how. On the Profit Answer Man, we learn money mastery without all the complicated accounting mumbo jumbo using a simple system. Your accountant is busy documenting your transactions and creating a rear view mirror of what happened. My guess is you don't even look at the reports they sent you. If you're like most business owners, you struggle with this, and it's not your fault. We aren't taught money in school, and accountants aren't taught how to be profitable. The Profit First system created by Mike Michalowicz works, and he certified me to help you implement the system in your business. Remember, the new equation is sales minus profit equals expenses. Let's face it, without cash flow, you can't pay your employees, buy needed materials, or pay your mortgage and support your family. I help you to do that and more so you can focus on the parts of the business you love and receive the rewards for your labor and investment into your business. The stronger you are as a business owner, the more jobs you create, the better we are as a country. Small business owners are the backbone of America, and for that, you deserve to be well rewarded. Just remember, more revenue does not equal more profit. That's why we focus on the bottom line. This episode of the Profit Answer Man podcast is brought to you by smbpodcastnetwork.com. The network is a collection of podcasts and shows from around the internet, which focus on bringing you interviews with amazing guests who share actionable advice, ideas, and information for small and medium-sized business owners and entrepreneurs. Visit www.smbpodcastnetwork.com to find more great shows and easily subscribe to be notified of new episodes. It's a great way to discover quality content. If you've discovered us via the network, then I hope you enjoy today's show and will consider subscribing directly so you never miss our episodes. Big news. We realize that we are not able to help every business and that many smaller ones can't justify our fees. And quite frankly, they're right, but they still need help. And that's why we are creating the Profit First Experience, a course that includes different levels of support and an upcoming community to focus on helping you to be more profitable. If you're interested in learning more, please use the link in the show notes to sign up to be notified when it launches and to secure the pre-launch special pricing. As you already know, Profit Firks works for any type of business. However, each industry has its own unique needs. Today, we're chatting about Profit First for salon owners. However, it's just as applicable regardless of the industry you're in. Because the principles are universal, you just need to adapt them to your business. Ronit is also going to talk about how many other factors that will help you lead to business and life success. Ronit Enos is a profit Jedi. She's host of the Huddle Time with Ronit, and she's the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Profit First for Salon Owners. And she runs a business mastermind, helping business owners seemingly generate record-breaking net profits that powerfully elevate their impact. She's a serial entrepreneur, and she launched and grew her Maximine brand into an award-winning seven-figure salon with six-figure net profits, propelling her to the top 1% of salons in the country. Let's meet her and see how she did it. Welcome to the Profit Answer Man, Ronit Enos. It's great to meet you today. Oh, it's so good to be here, Rocky. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I know this is going to be a great conversation. 
That it is. Can you share a little bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, absolutely. So my name is Renee Dinos, and I'm the CEO and founder of Salon Cadence. Salon Cadence is a white glove teaching and training company that help all businesses in the beauty industry uh, to get to the seven figures income. And everybody asks me, why is seven figures income? Because I always say, well, if you want to take a nice income for yourself, if you want to provide a nice, a nice income to your uh, staff members, you have to be at the seven figures. Uh, but we also work with a lot of solopreneurs, independent uh, beautician, uh, people that are just started their career, and they really want to become profitable. When I say profitable, I mean profit. And so we are a global uh, of expert CEO and uh, experts around the world that have been successful, and we mentor our members. That's Salon Cadence. Um, and just recently, I published Profit First for Salons. Um, I authored a book, and I'm super excited to share this with you, Rocky. And I am excited. We've had a lot of the different Profit First specialty books on, and always love hearing about what's the same and what's different with regards to that. But before we get to that, I always like to learn people's Profit First stories. How did you learn about Profit First? Ah, it's a good story. Um, you know, when um, I started my, um, my in, you know, in my industry as a beauty professional, I was a hairdresser. Uh, and, and shortly after I spent some few years learning how to become a good hairdresser and craft and uh, specialize in my art, um, I knew that I was meant to do more than just that. I knew that I was supposed to open some magical place, beautiful place where people not only come uh, to get beautiful and feel confidence and, and look amazing, also I wanted them to have like a special uh, time, like almost as if you were in a coffee shop in Paris or in Tel Aviv. So we opened uh, a salon in 2001, actually September 2001, in the middle of craziness. And uh, shortly we busted our seams and needed to open another one. And we expanded and moved on. But you know what? No matter what we did, and, and by the way, I've owned five companies and uh, exit uh, two of them. But in the salon beauty industry, I couldn't couldn't get to the point where I said, I am super financially successful. I feel fulfilled. You know, I spend hours and times and endless amount of hours into the night, um, not seeing my children, saying hi and bye to my husband for many years, but none of it brought major profit. And for some reason, people say, that in the small business industry, and you know what the small business is, it's anything under $22 million. That means a lot of businesses think that 5% or 8% or 10% is a wonderful profit. Well, who wants to work for that? Nobody. So I knew that there's got to be a way that I can find how can I literally make a lot more than that and keep it. And so it took, me a, it took me a while, Rocky, to find the solution until I read this little book that my friend gifted to me, Nicole Peterkin, and she's in the wealth industry. And uh, she said, you have to read it. And when I read that, I implemented it right away in my book. And that was the number one out of three uh, categories that I found why small businesses are not successful. And when I implement the number one out of three, my trajectory neither went way up. You know, we went from six figures to seven figures revenue with six figures net worth. So uh, that's how I got into the profit first for myself. I implemented at home, ran my home business, uh, my, my home personal life based on that. And when I was ready to exit again, and I was ready to teach and train entrepreneurs around the world how to become profitable. I implement that in my new business. And so hundreds and hundreds of small businesses in the beauty industry are really profitable, really, really, really 
profitable. And for me, my passion is to work with women that are uh, striving to feel successful financially, independently, and wealthy. And that's mainly our members at Salon Cadence. I love it. So what is what what was the difference that that it made that allowed you to do all of that? The difference. And what do you mean by that, Rocky? Do you mean like um what got me going on that or or No, what what took you like what was the difference that profit first made that allowed you to go from 6 to 7 figures and then also to be highly profitable? Oh, that's a fantastic question, you know. Um First of all, there's a five things about Profit First that um, that should be normal, right? Uh, and that, and but for some reason, we're not. We we can for whatever reason we can't get to that normality. And so, number one is predictability. You know, with with Profit First, you can tell exactly what you're going to be taking, what you're going to pay Uncle Sam. It removes the gas out of the work. So you don't even have to wait to have a meeting with your accountant or your bookkeeper to know exactly how much money does does Uncle Sam need this month or you need to give Uncle Sam or how much money can you take or what do you allocate it for payroll? You have predictability. You don't have to guess. And so if, if a salon owner or a business owner, you take the guest out of the work, what do you get? You get sleeping good at night. So, you know, so that's number one. Number two, what I loved about it is that you really don't have to become uh, an accountant to know your numbers. You know, I was always afraid of numbers. Um, I did not do very well at school with numbers. Um, And and when I grew up in my house, um, for some reason, my money mindset was always money is not a good thing. And because money is not a good thing, and because the way I was brought up, um, I felt like I was never going to be a successful entrepreneur because I didn't know my numbers, and I was afraid of them, you know. And uh, I changed that story with the profit first. When I've learned a lot about um, what does it take to navigate your own story with numbers, and I became so empowered to make decisions and predict and say, okay, I did great revenue this month. Do I want to buy shoes or do I want to buy something different, right? Because I love shoes. And, and you know, at the end of the day, uh, I can make my choice of where I want to put my money. Why? Because I know what I'm going to be uh, generating and what am I going to be keeping. And so the Profit First system it's almost like a simple, stupid type of a thing because you manage your cash flow and you know where your money is at all time. That it does. It's simple. And yet I don't know why people won't implement simple. Um, I, you know, it's so funny, Rocky. What do you think? What's the reason why people don't implement simple? Well, because simple just doesn't work. We need a complicated fancy solution to our problems. So true. Well, you know what? We are heading into this buzzword called recession, what the people are saying. And I would like to introduce it as succession. And this is an opportunity uh, to simplify our life so we can thrive during this time. So we all have to go and, 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 and enter this simplicity of life. But I, you know, we work with hundreds of uh, salon owners and independent uh, stylists. And the number one reason why they don't implement that is because they don't know what they don't know. They don't have a blueprint and a plan. And to all, in order to execute the plan, you have to have time. And so instead of carving an amazing, delicious five hours out of their week, they take five hours and they squeeze it with more sales. And so they never stop to see how well they're doing, you know, and, and, and that's probably 
where we need to start. We need to carve the first five hours of every week to get in touch with your numbers and, um, and, and start loving them. The minute you understand them, you fall in love. That's working on your business instead of in your business. Yeah, at least five hours a day, you know, that's a good beginning. That's a good start. Now, when we start with our members, they start with that, and that takes a little while. And then they graduated to become the visionary of their company. And so that's the whole process is to get to that point where your company is literally running for you instead of you running for the company. That sounds like a plan to get out of burnout. Totally. Yeah. I mean, listen, I was burning both end of my candles for, uh, I would say, at least five years before I learned my lessons um, on that. So I missed times with my children. Um, you know, uh, I hardly saw my husband. And, um, you know, travel was was not where I wanted to be. And my freedom of time is was not so... I just thought, Rocky, I don't know if you ever experienced that, but I thought that, you know what? I'm just going to do better sales. I'm just going to go high end and I'm going to niche myself. And um, and I, I applied every rule there was, every advice there was from any consultant or, or, or coach or whatnot. I'm a good student. I put it all in, but no matter what I did, you know, I just kept adding more and more hours instead of adding uh, more freedom of hours. And I did. I burned out uh, a few times. You know, it's like it's like you're I don't know what it is with us. I don't know what it is with the entrepreneurs that the minute they um, get into something, they want to get into something different. And uh, they want they chasing the shiny things. And I did. I did all of it. So I know that. No matter where, um, if I would walk down the street and there was a hole, and I knew there was a hole in there, but yet I would fall in it. And I would do the same, you know, it's like Groundhog Day. You would do it over and over and over again. So it's what point you're going to say enough, okay? And what point you're going to say enough and and do things differently, you know? And it took me... um, six years to do things differently to start you know so it's i think it's it's got to start with your thinking okay this is not working what what will work for me you know it's like um i've been doing diets all my life you know so what's working and what's not working and i start a new diet all the time but what if what if i make a diet not be a diet and make it a lifestyle so that's what the profit first for us and that is so true. Diets that are not lifestyles are destined to fail because once you achieve your goal, you stop doing what you need to do. And if it's not fun and enjoyable, you won't keep continuing. And then people yo-yo and they're back where they started. And so creating it in such a way that you enjoy it, it's fun, and that you will always do it ensure success and it's about how i mean your business should be fun if it's not it's time to either change or find a new business yeah you know i always said i always say you know if you want to be successful in your company right no matter what you grow what your purpose is it's like you have to think about your exit plan i know it's i know we all talk about it but you really do because at one point you're going to fall out of love of what you do it's nature you know, it's going to happen and you want to sell it or, or expend it and you have to have a plan for that. And so uh, if you want to be um, profitably sound, where the business does not rely on you to be profitably sound, uh, then, then you definitely need to do something completely different. And I just think that this is a simple way uh, for a business owner to smell the roses. You know, and and you and I, we we're talking about okay, how much are we going to talk about cash flow, and how much are we going to talk about saving and allocating? Let's talk about wealth. Like I love talking about money these days because um, wealth is where it's at. Somewhere I, I heard that cash is trash. <laughs> you know, 
cash is trash. Um, and, you know, we, we're, we're so used to think that cash is, uh, is king or queen. But if you're going to hold on to your cash, then uh, what's the value of that? We, we want to reinvest it. And, and that's something that you do very well, Rocky, is you, you, you know, you're not stopping at just having a cash flow management. But now you say, OK, you have cash now. Yippee. Now what? Now what you do with that? So what do you what do you recommend your clients? So it's do? funny because this is what my clients say. You know, they work together for a year or so. And then their first comment is, we've never had so much cash. What do we do? Love it. And what we talk about is removing it from the company. And then we decide what is best for them. So you talk about diets. It's the same concept. What is best for you in wealth building. So some of the people are going to say, hey, I'd like to get in real estate, but I don't want to be a landlord. But you know what? What if I'm my, my own landlord and I buy the building that my company works out of? So that's one way to build wealth is, is to buy the building. Some people might go invest in real estate. Some people might decide to start another business or, or look at other streams or funding other businesses. Some people just go boring, you know, they invest in for, you know, into retirement plans because they get a massive tax deduction. And so they go with the tax deduction and they start to build wealth without having to do extra work. But I think a lot of that depends on the person, what they enjoy, what their skills are and what their ultimate goals are. So when I sit down with a client, my first call with a client, we spend two hours understanding the person. We don't talk about the business. We talk about their goals. Where are they going? What do they want out of life? What's it going to take to get there? What does that number look like? And then then we reverse engineer everything to get to the number. And we talk about time versus money because that's a balance. For a lot of my business owners, the conversations we're having is, how do we get you out of the business? Because if you want to sell a business, the less you're involved in the business, the more valuable it is. So let's let's get you out of the business. Let's let you do what you love and learn to let other people take over. And we systematize the business for them. Yeah, because you have to, you know, we, we all feel uh, happy when we progress. You know, I feel like we, we all feel, to, OK, so you got to that point and I love that. That because there's so many ways to to multiply your money and so many ways to reinvest and you always have to touch it up with at the end of the day what do you want this business to do for you like what are you looking to get from it are you looking to get from it um, you know um, to pay your children tuition or or are you looking to buy a house in Portugal you know you're looking to buy another house in Costa Rica. Are you looking to, you know, what are the things that are going to give you pleasure in life? Um, you know, a lot of the things that we go over with our clients is number one is just like if you could open a nonprofit, what would it be? What it would be to your nonprofit? And it's funny. It's, we always attract the same people. Everybody that works with us always want to have some uh, nonprofit that has to do with helping uh, women that don't have the means or single women's or any kind of a social cause in that, that's their purpose. At the end of the day, if you make so much money and you're, you're, you're loving your job and because that's where you want to go to, uh, what would you do? You know, what else would you do? So some say, I'd love to teach, I'd love to help. And one of the thing is like, I would like to open a nonprofit. And uh, that requires skill, that requires skill, that requires money, that requires time. And what if you can do it already? What if you can do it right now and don't have to wait to earn your dues until you get there? And I think that if you, if you start immediately with that, you just create some purpose in life and you're more happy doing that. And a lot of my, my owners will use a part of their profit to fund their philanthropy, whether it's giving to a religious organization or some other types of donations, or in this case, starting your own and, and focusing on that. So I think those are all options, but in order to do those things, you need to be profitable. 
<laughs> and so that's kind of where it starts. What do you see as the biggest struggles that many salon owners face? Uh, they don't. They don't have the time to outsource. They don't have. The, they try to do everything. They try to do social media. They try to do uh, the education, the the hiring, the interviews. The you know, and they never answer a question. The most important question is, what do I want to get from all of it? What is it going to do for me financially, professionally, and personally? And so when they start, they don't have a clear vision. Uh, What they think about clear vision is like, I just want to get busy. I just want to make money. I just want to make my means. Um, You know, very small amount really have that big vision uh, mindset. And uh, we just never were taught that uh, how to think big how to think within real big numbers. Like when we do an exercise with our clients, we typically say, well, how much money do you want to take home? And that's an answer that cannot answer. You know, it's very difficult. Well, no, seriously, how much money do you want to make? And goes, well, what do you mean? Like revenue? I'm like, yeah, revenue for yourself as an owner income. What do you want to make? And uh, 10,000, I'm like, so that means 120,000. What are you going to do with 120? Tell me. Well, after you pay Uncle Sam or before you pay Uncle Sam? I'm like, well, what do you think? Well, now they just start thinking. I kind of actually would like to take 120 home. Okay. So what are you going to do with $120,000? And that's where this thinking starts. Now, money is not everything. We all know that. We, we know that that's not the most important thing, but money touches everything that has to do even with starting a, a, non, a, a nonprofit, right? Uh, just to give, to fund your own love and charity. Um, so that's where the conversation needs to start first in any business. And then, and then afterwards, understand what is your actual love like, what do you love to do? What do you love to do? Because if you do something that you love, you'll be very prosperous in terms of revenue. You know, but if you're going to do things that you have to do 80% of the time and you're not working on what you love to do 80% of the time, you'll become a burnout because you're chasing that time in dollar. So that's number two that they never think because profit first is money. Yes. And profit first is also emotional. You need to take that profit first. And the third reason why I think they don't, they, they're not getting to that nirvana is because they don't spend enough time on their development, on their own self-development. So those are the three things I say, if I could recommend any of our listeners right now, Make sure you hit those three first. That's profit first. And you're going much deeper than just the numbers and the grind of the business, which is, I think, where most people are stuck is in the grind. And the goal is to get out of the grind and be able to uh, to enjoy the business. So your book Are there some differences between what you talk about in your book versus what Mike talks about in the uh, the Profit First book? Yeah, definitely. I would say that we implemented after after doing two betas with with clients, what numbers needs to be really specific to our industry? And we adjusted that. So that's number one. We also talk about, um, we also give a lot of teaching and tools and resources on how to grow your revenue. So uh, definitely we need to align the profits with the revenue goals. And so we teach how to do it. What I love about this book too, is just like Mike has great stories that are real stories. We have six heroes in this book that through the pandemic thrived um unconditionally through the business using the profit first so these are this is real this is not just blah 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 you know and um also we have uh, a great ideation like great ideas of 
how to create uh, more sustainability, more consistency in your business. So we have a lot of really great values for our owners to do it. So, um, and it comes like a workbook. So um, it's, it's, it's kind of fun, you know, you, you go through chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, you implement, you implement, and um, that's, um, what makes it more accountable where you can actually implement that and do it because everybody can write a book <laughs> and everybody can publish a book. Uh, it's hard. It's like probably one of the hardest thing I've ever done, but I will say that to implement is now is the art. How are you going to implement that? So um, that's why it's so great. We also have a great chapter about bookkeeping for profit. We have our own dedicated uh, Profit First bookkeepers that um, makes huge impact in people's life immediately. So we talk a lot about that, the important thing. Our bookkeeper has her own chapter there. Uh, We call it Tiffany. Uh, And so uh, we got that as well. And the stories of our heroes of what they have done to be successful. So that's just a lot of great examples of what they need, they can do. Uh, it, it's literally, it's a million dollar, million dollar in a box. <laughs> what do you find is the biggest struggle for people who are trying to implement profit first? Consistency. Hmm. And uh, everybody gets overwhelmed. I, I don't know about your clients, but what we, they, they're all like, well, why do I need to open five accounts? Why do I need to open seven accounts? And it comes down to trust. It comes down to trust, right? And so what I usually say when we do our, our, our process in the beginning, just do what we tell you to do. Just, just do it. Just go for it. Because when you start seeing the incremental growth in those beautiful accounts, you're going to go all in and play all out on those. And you can be profitable in one month or you can be profitable in one year you choose and so i think when they actually become consistent and they do it with their own hands because they can delegate that process to somebody else for sure but first they have to see it in their own eyes and feel it with their own hands and if they do it consistently i think that's where we're going to get them hooked i think i was listening to one of your podcasts and that was the number one thing that you guys were talking about is that be in the action zone and actually do it. And that's the biggest thing Mike talks about. All the people read the book, but they don't implement. <laughs> you have to take action, open the accounts, do your allocations, and then continue to improve your business and, and make it better and more profitable. And it does take time and you just have to keep at it. And little by little, with a little bit of thinking time and a little bit of action, you will slowly find ways to uh, to improve your business. Well, at, the, at the end of the day, I think you need to think about, do you want to be with your children or do you not want to be with them? You know, there was one time that I was um, doing my client's hair, right? I was foiling it was Saturday, it was nine o'clock in the morning, and I get a phone call, and my, my assistant comes to me, Rene, it's Bill on the phone, my husband. And, and I said, oh, okay, let me, let me grab that phone. And I said to my client, Kelly, I'll be right back with you. And I go to the phone and I say, hey, babe, what's up? And he says, uh, just to let you know that when you get in, this is where you wanna park your car. And I'm like, what do you mean get in? I'm, I'm, at, home, I'm at work, working. And says, well, Roni, today is Gabby's, my uh, 11-year-old, um, New England Conservatory first cello chair audition. And I completely forgot. Now, what kind of a mother are you? you know? And there were a few stories like that. And so it's time to start thinking, do you want to become who you don't want to be or do you want to become who you always wanted to be? And so profit comes first. It's deep. (laughs) 
It was. Thank you so much for joining us today. If people would like to learn more about you, the book, where is the best place for them to do that? The best place is to go to ProfitFirstSalons.com. Uh, when you go in there, you're going to have a button to buy that book. So you will buy the book. You're going to go to Amazon. It'll take you right to Amazon. And then you're going to get that order number and go back and implement it in a special little box where you can get all the resources that come with it. So that's the best way to do it. Um, but you can always contact us at on Instagram, Ronit.Enos. Uh, that's my handle. You can email us, go to Ronit enos.com and i'm very approachable and uh, through emails as well thank you so much for joining us today and i will make sure to put that all in the show notes to make it easy for everyone that's perfect thank you so much it was so much fun rocky and let's let's help people make millions and keep them and that is the goal make millions and keep it <laughs> Starting and consistency are the two driving factors to success with Profit First. It doesn't matter what's happening in the economy because this works in good times and it really helps during bad times. The sooner you start, the sooner you'll be on your way to profitability. Then you'll have to answer the bigger question. What am I going to do with all this cash? And believe it or not, that's what my clients ask me a year year and a half into it. They're like, we've never had this much cash. What do we do? Got to tell you, it's a good problem to have. Reach out to Rooney or me if you have questions or need help. If you want a done for you service, you can hire us as your chief profitability officers. You have your own area of expertise and maybe you want to spend more of your time doing what you love. We only work with a handful of clients, so they all get our full attention. We work with business owners who have or are growing to half a million to five million in revenue. You can use the scheduling link in the show notes to get on our calendar for a good fit conversation to see if we're the right people to support you and how we can help you. Hey, it's Rocky. Don't forget to check out my other podcast, Richer Soul, where we talk about life beyond money and how to live that ultimate life and become a better leader in your company. As we close out, let's repeat the mantra. Revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. Have an abundant and profitable week.